My name is Jeff Hemingway. I'm the NRCS Soil Health Specialist here in South Dakota. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about our tabletop rainfall simulator. And we've got it set up here, but for the most part what i really like to do today is talk a little bit more about actually collecting a sample properly for the simulator. And at some point it makes a huge difference on what we have and what we're really looking at to get that sample and have it react like we think it should. Um, so let's go grab a sample. Okay, we place our cutter, uh, remove some of the residue because of hair pinning uh, potential, and, uh, and that's gonna, like I say, is a lot of times residue, especially if it's moist, will move uh, along the edge of that cutter, will not cut off completely. But if we remove some of that residue um, on the soil surface and set our cutter, try to drive it in very uniformly, putting pressure on the corners. Again, part way in, we want to remove some of that material out in the front so that we're not bending up our funnel out in the front. And then we're going to continue to drive in that cutter. Okay, so you're going to drive it in uniformly down to that soil surface is actually at the front of that, that uh, funnel. In other words, even with the front of that funnel. And then we're going to actually remove that sample and try to keep the material in it. I'll put that 2x4 on the top of it. Again, I'm not digging a hole all the way around everything. I'm just taking out enough so that I can get my spade underneath. Cutter itself. And to the bottom of that sample. Try to take it off as uniformly as possible. And in this particular case, we end up with, we've got a, a, a platy layer down in this no-till system that, that's a, an area of compaction. Um, we can actually see that but it's, it's fairly uniform on the bottom. It should actually be nice granular structure all the way down. We'd like to see that. But in this particular case, it's not, that's not the case. Uh, we're gonna uniformly shear that off. And the interesting thing to me is that you can still see that we have some pretty good macropores through that platiness. Still gonna infiltrate fairly well for a no-till sample, but you'd like to see a lot better granular structure and a lot better um, soil development. Um, that's an issue for this producer. Coming out underneath that cutter. And in this particular case, we don't have to cover anything. We've got good residue cover, we've got a good structure because of that rye. And again, just as we're in that pasture type situation, that root development, we've got uh, our soil hanging on the bottom of that. And then we can go through and shear that off to the bottom. We did end up with a little hair pinning along the edge. That shouldn't really bother just too much. But I think you can see that cell structure. And then if we take our knife and then pick at a little bit at the bottom, making sure that our back pores are open to the, to the bottom, we should have really good infiltration with this sample. Again, I'm going to move enough soil on the edges of it so I can get my shovel up underneath it. As I mentioned before, keep that 2x4 on the top of it so that that soil is, stays in place as much as possible. Okay, so then we're going to lift that out. And you can see here that it basically sheared itself off, unlike the other sample we had. And I don't really have to shear it off just too much. But the interesting thing, of course, is as, as we start rolling this over and start looking at it, trying not to lose any material, see the structure is a lot different on the, on the bottom. Very few of any macropores at all. Uh, because of that soil structure, uh, it's really not going to infiltrate water very well, well at all. It's, it's just not. And in fact, as loose as it is on the soil surface, 
and we'll put this over here on my 2x4. Normally I take a, like a wet uh, newspaper and put that down. And you can see so that some of the material that is on the surface is, is moved around. We'll put that back. Let's, let's say a tabletop presentation. And we have stored those samples over time. And the way we actually do this is I do this outdoors out in the field, but I'll box up my samples so they don't dehydrate so they can't dry out. Um, the example here is I'll take a plastic bag and put it in a box. take the sample itself and ideally you can store them in the cutter itself. Uh, I have pressed them out. That's really a challenge to get them back in and not have that prefer pre preferential flow that we talked about. But for the most part what we're really talking about is the best way to do that is to, to preserve those samples is then is to seal this thing back up.